All right, friends, welcome back to the Blessed Family Radio Show. So excited to be with you this day. God is good. He is always good, and He is sovereign, and He is calling people to follow Him, and He is leading a military campaign against the forces of darkness. And the good news, however good you think it is, it gets better and better and better. God is so incredibly good. Hey, uh, before we jump into today's topic, I want to just ask you guys a favor. We are trying to build up and really establish our YouTube channel. Uh, we've been we've been throwing videos on there for five years now, bits and pieces, but we're really trying to buckle down. So if you watch YouTube at all, and if you have the means to share it with others, uh, please consider going on, maybe subscribing. And if any of our um, videos speak to you, encourage you, if you could just share those and spread those around, uh, that would be a huge help to us. Uh, so that the work we're investing, the time we're investing, uh, will impact as many people as possible. Uh, really, really appreciate that. And that is the YouTube channel, Jared Dodd, J-A-R-E-D-D-O-D-D. -D. Lots of D's in that name. All right. Today we're going to talk about training your children to conquer the metaverse. And this is a big deal. I mean, this is one of the elephants in the church today. This is something that uh, there's lots of heavy hearts with, uh, man. I mean, when it comes to media, internet, social media, all of these are bombarding us 24 seven. Uh, on average, they say people spend on average two and a half hours a day on social media, three plus hours a day on their phone, man, I miss the good old days. I'm not sure about you guys, but the days when there were no cell phones, no internet, no cable TV, I'm dating myself a bit, but I can remember as a kid, with my sweet uh, sweet sister Jenny on Saturday morning cartoons, you know we had three channels. I can actually remember that, and we had a TV that that to turn it on and off you had to pull pull out and push in a switch, and then that same switch was the volume. And we had three channels. The TV would go two to thirteen, but only two, eleven, and thirteen worked, and that was ABC, NBC, CBS. And I don't know. I just kind of miss those days, um, but. Guess what? We can't we can't go back to that. We are here and so we have to ask the question, how do we survive this matrix? How do we raise our children not to be swallowed up by the metaverse, uh by internet, by social media? I mean, this is one of like I said the elephants in the room that we all see, but few are actively discussing it and pursuing solutions. So, uh you know, this is our goal to help you, to bless you. We want to offer a few ideas. So, let's start with the knee-jerk reaction idea, and that is to go Amish. And what I mean by that is no internet, no screens, and you know, in many ways, it's not a bad idea. It's very tempting, and yet, for me, I don't think that's quite the answer, and this is why. Uh, because even though we can definitely, you know, we should be somewhere in between where we are and there, uh, our children need to know how to live in this world and how to take dominion in this world. You know, people used to think that literature was evil and bad, but guess what? Christians have conquered that field in, in a big way. People used to think that entertainment or movies were bad. Christians, once again, have conquered that. Uh, it's the same with music, with the arts. Uh, friends, internet is not inherently evil. Selfishly, I wish it didn't exist, but it does, and you're using it right now if you're listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube. Uh, it, it, it can be used for good, but where is the balance? And that is really the question. Okay. So I am going to lay out, um, because I don't think we should go Amish, although that's better than the alternative, I suppose. But what typically happens if you do that, if you just cut it all off is, and if you don't educate your children, I guess you could do that, but you have to really educate your children because otherwise, I, and I've, and I've seen this, they get out of the home and all of a sudden they go a hundred miles an hour in the wrong direction. So I'm going to give you some ideas of kind of what we do and what we hold to, but I want to give a disclaimer. These aren't rules. These aren't thus saith the Lord. This is just Jared Dodd's suggestions. If they don't match your situation or if you disagree with them, that's totally okay. They're my thoughts. Let's learn from each other. Uh, reach out. Let me know what you do. But you know, this is where sometimes it's good to hear other people's perspectives and to compare and contrast and to borrow from each other. So I've got six steps, okay? Six pieces of advice. Okay, step one, in almost anything is always education, okay? You need, you need to educate your children. Internet is dangerous, but it can be useful. It can help, and it can often devastate and destroy. You know, you need to teach them about entertainment and how 
What, what, what the enemy does is he uses entertainment, whether it's humor, action, suspense, to hook us in, and while we're hooked into that, he's chipping away at our Christian morals. You, you need to teach them that. You need to teach them that children who are left alone, you know, who are just left to internet without any boundaries or rules or training, it's, it's, it's a really bad idea. They get chewed up and spit out. You, you need to teach them about what social media is doing to the family and to people's brains. You need to teach them about how, how, how easy it is to get online and five hours later, you're still there and you haven't achieved anything. You need to teach them how the enemy is doing and using media to destroy people and destroy lives. So education is number one, whether it's going to be an integral part of your life or you're going to have nothing to do with it. They need to be educated. That's step one. And that I have no disclaimers because that I'm, I'm personally set on. You must educate your children about this. Well, look, they're supposed to be aware of the enemy's schemes. And there's a whole lot of schemes wrapped up in this topic of the enemy. Okay, tip number two. Once again, okay, now this one, disclaimer. This is my personal opinion. Don't let your child have a smartphone unless absolutely necessary. Don't let your child have, have, have a smartphone unless absolutely necessary. Now, what people often say is, well, Jared, it is necessary. They work, they travel, and so they need a phone in case we need to get a hold of them. There's an accident. Agreed, they need a phone that's different than a pocket computer that we call phones today. See, what, what we call phones together, in particular smartphones, or specifically smartphones, yes, they, they can be used as phones, but they're actually computers, and so, for instance, our two older sons, they work, they leave the house, they travel this year, or actually in the next 30 days, they're going to a conference in Mississippi and then again in Arizona on their own. We're going to send them with a phone, but it's a flip phone. There's no internet on it. And a text, you have to push each number three times until you get your letter. What's really cool about that phone is I have never had to tell them to get off in it, uh, to uh, get off of it. Most of the time, they have no idea where it is because it's boring. It's just for calling and texting, and texting is a pain, and the only numbers they have on texting is their boss, parents, and grandparents. So I would advise you to not let your child have a smartphone, and I would advise parents, count the cost. Don't, we shouldn't have smartphones unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, in order to carry that out, one of the pitfalls that people fall into in the context of their kids are the kids are in peer groups where at 10 or 12 or 13, everyone has a smartphone. And so they're like, well, how come I don't have one? And, and you know, that's where we have to be really careful who our kids hang out with. Okay, number three, do not allow your children to be on social media unless you have a really good reason. You say, well, Jared, what would be a good reason? Well, let me tweak it and not only give you a good reason, but let me give you some criteria. In my personal opinion, for a, for, for a son or daughter to have social media, like you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the rest, they need to be mature young adults who are about taking dominion. They need to know how to have real relationships. They need to show real hospitality. They need to know how to have a good conversation. If they don't know those things, if, if, if they aren't good with relationships, if they aren't good with communication, if they aren't mature, if they aren't focused, if they don't, you know, if they aren't on board with this vision of taking dominion for the glory of God and, and they, see, they see the battle and they are enlisted in the Lord's army, um, if they don't know how to respectfully disagree, maybe they're not ready. Maybe they're not ready. About, oh, I don't know, six months ago, maybe not that long, we terminated our Facebook account. And it was hard because it was attached with our ministry Facebook account that had, I don't know, 1,500 or so people on it, and we were able to give ministry updates, and it was great. And look, I'm not condemning you if you have Facebook, but we got off of it for the, for the, for the simple reason that I didn't like my kids seeing me on it because I did not want them to be the norm or think that it's just assumed, right? Now, to each their own, but my challenge to you is, question, is it a good idea? Well, I just don't think it's a good idea for a 15-year-old son or daughter to be on social media. 
especially in a day and age where most teenagers don't know how to have social interaction in the real world, not the virtual world. So our only social media inlet and outlet is YouTube. And even with that, you ha- you have to be very careful. So I've taught my kids. I'm like, hey, listen, you can waste a lot of time. And, and, and also tangent, but you can not only waste time on YouTube, but you can fill your head with just a lot of useless <laughs> space. You can just, I mean, there's so many things that, that you can watch. Okay, you could, from now until the day you die, fill your time 24-7 with funny things on YouTube. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's funny. And it's like, man, we need to count the cost. And, 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 and parents, this is something that's taking us, that's blindsiding us because growing up, we didn't have this stuff, right? Okay, number four, greatly limit their, their internet usage. In our home, my two older sons and Ivy, my 13-year-old daughter, Nah, she really doesn't have this. No, it's just them. They have 45 minutes of internet time a week supervised. And they're totally fine with that. So number one, educate. Number two, don't let them have a smartphone unless you think it's a really good idea. Number three, don't allow them to have social media unless you think it's a really good idea. Number four, limit their internet usage. And number five, beware of pornography and remember that 97% of all teenage boys have fallen into that trap by the age of 15. And most are exposed between the ages of 8 and 11. This, again, is an elephant in the room. My goal is for my children to never see it. And sometimes people scoff at that. They're like, that's just unrealistic. Well, okay, so what what should the expectation be? Yeah, they're going to look. No. That stuff rewires people's brains. It's really, really bad. Now, obviously, is there repentance? Is there... A second chance, I mean, absolutely. For the 97% or the 99% point whatever who have looked, yes. I mean, of course there's forgiveness and of course there's hope. But, I mean, let's set the standard that God sets. And so when I see parents giving their children unlimited, unsupervised access, they are setting their kids up for an impossible test. I mean, they're really setting them up for failure. I have known many children that were good Christian children, good homeschool children who were left, uh, who, who, who were left with internet as a friend to be their schoolmaster, as it were. And they were completely transformed into leftist, into atheist, into liberal Christianity, you know, liberal Christians, which is such an oxymoron in the sense that They believe, yeah, them, you know, they're doing better than they've ever been with Christ, and they believe that hell doesn't exist, things like that. Guys, that happens all the time. So the last challenge I have for you, or the sixth tip is set the example, parents. Chances are statistically that you are on your phone three to four hours a day. You say, no, Jared, it's only two. All right, well, I don't know if I can congratulate you on that. But, I mean, think about it. When we were kids, maybe our parents were looking at the TV, but they would often look at us. They would talk to us. So in closing on today's show, I have three challenges for you. Okay, parents, here we go. We, let's, 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 let's wrap this up with a pretty bow. Three challenges to parents. Number one, turn off your phone from before dinner until your kids go to bed. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Come on. Turn off your phone from dinner until at least your kids go to bed if you want to really get the gold medal until you go to bed at dinner, the phone's off and you don't pick it up until the next morning. Number two, rethink your social media usage as a family. That's a challenge. And number three, talk to your children about this today, not tomorrow. Talk to them about all of this that we've discussed today. So turn off your phone from dinner till bed, rethink social media, talk to your children. Friends, I don't want to see our children chewed up and spit out by the nonsense that is so prevalent. We want to see them, of course, overcome. But to do this, we have to be proactive, we have to be honest, and we have to, we, we, we have to tackle the hard topics. So I really hope you take this seriously. May God bless you. May he bless your family. And may your children uh, be found holy and blameless 
uh, through uh, the grace of God. Love you guys so much. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.